This is our Walmart mini bike, Little Red, and I'm gonna make him go 100 miles an hour. Now, last time we did some engine modifications that got this guy from three and a half horsepower stock to 18 horsepower, but still, he's not quite ready to get to that 100 mile per hour mark. So today, we're gonna make three crucial upgrades so that we can get to that finish line. You ready? Whenever you are. Okay, go for it. Welcome to Donut. Even though we increased the bike's horsepower by 600%, it's still coming up a little short of our initial projections. So to actually get this little hog to 100, we're gonna need to tweak a lot more than just the engine. You might have noticed at the end of our last episode, our tires magically changed. And that's because the stock tires on these things aren't gonna cut it. Now this is what comes on our Coleman mini bike. This is an off-road tire. When you're going 100 miles an hour, this isn't the ideal tire tread. Also, it's much bigger. You need more torque to spin a bigger tire. So we went with a smaller tire. Also, we went with a slick tire. Why slick? Because it's a race bike now. On a drag strip, which we're gonna be on, this off-road tread doesn't give you the contact patch you want. A slick tire though, real good contact. It'll grip that surface a lot better, keep us nice and stable when we're going 100 miles an hour. Smaller tire is not only easier for the engine to spin, it also has less rolling resistance. So we're fighting mechanical forces less, there's less drag on it, so that's gonna help us get to that top speed of 100 miles an hour. Our stock wheel uses a pretty old school drum brake assembly. We're gonna get rid of that completely. Pretty simple standard drum brake design. These pads right here push into the inner hub of this wheel, which slows it down. Not the best way to brake if you're looking to brake quickly. So what we're gonna do is upgrade to hydraulic disc setup. So when it comes time to brake, it'll brake. This thing is much faster. I, it gets up to speed quicker because it just wants to go. It just wants to eat. And we were able to make 18 horsepower with just gasoline. But here's the thing. We know we're gonna need a little bit more juice than that. So we're upgrading our fueling system to methanol. Now you might be thinking methanol has more energy density compared to gasoline, but actually that's not right. It's actually less than gasoline. However, you can burn a lot more of it. And one of the important things when making horsepower is your air to fuel ratio. When you're using gasoline, anywhere from 12 to 13 parts gasoline to one part air is right in that good sweet spot. With methanol, you can do four to one. So you can burn three times more methanol per power stroke compared to gasoline and that is what allows you to make more power. So methanol gives you more horsepower, but you have to burn a lot more of it. So there are a couple components we're gonna need to upgrade. The first is the jets inside the carburetor. Because we're delivering more fuel, those orifices and the jets need to be bigger so more fuel can flow through them. Now the second thing we need is a mechanical fuel pump. That makes sure that the bowl inside the carburetor is always filled with methanol so we don't ever run it dry. This is our little fuel pump. This is gonna be able to make sure that we keep the bowl of this carburetor nice and full of fuel. After we do that, that's pretty much it. Those are the only two things we need to make more horsepower with methanol. <laughs> what? Zach, look at this monstrosity. Dude, I'm cutting this <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's the worst. Let me see it, let me see it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I think we're in the right zone for jetting. I'm feeling a little bit, a little bit happier. Okay, so we have a baseline on our jets, and right now it should fire up and then just do some small tweaking. So, fingers crossed. See how it goes. And so now, after all of that, Final piece to our 100 mile per hour puzzle. It's something you might be able to skip on your physics exam, but it's something you definitely cannot get rid of in the real world, and that is wind resistance. Now the drag caused by air resistance increases exponentially. We're gonna be going 100 miles an hour. While that's five times faster than our base run of 20 miles an hour, we got five times the speed but 25 times the amount of air resistance. You gotta make up for that somehow with either more power or by gliding through that air a little bit better. 
So to combat that, last week, Adam from Illum Aesthetic, as well as Nikita from BD Engineering, came and 3D scanned our little mini motorcycle. They also did a scan with me on it. I had to be very still and they sprayed a mysteriously powdery substance all over my body that I inhaled a whole bunch of. <coughs> they took those scans and they 3D printed a cowling that we're gonna install to cut down on our drag. And here's the thing, they just pulled up, so it's time for us to go take a look. Whoa, holy crap. So yeah, this was done in a, I think week and a half. Dang. 25 days of printer time, split yeah. across three printers. What? Yeah, so you have the front nose right there. That's the engine mount area. Okay. That's the front wheel cover. And then this is the rear fairing. So we actually managed to squeeze that in. Cause that's actually the more important part as far as drag reduction goes. How much does all of this weigh added, do you know? 10 pounds, 10, oh, okay. 15 pounds. That's not much. Not terrible. I just won't eat in the morning. Now the guys were able to run a simulation to figure out how much wind resistance is on the bike with and without a fairing. So the bike stock without any aerodynamic benefit created 431 newtons of drag. But with the full aero kit installed, we got 413 newtons of drag. So not great. That's about a 4% reduction in drag, but still might be enough to help us get over that 100 mile per hour mark. So this is Pet G. So it's good to 185 degrees Fahrenheit. So it should handle what you're doing just fine. Honestly, the biggest problem I'm gonna be concerned about is just human error. Someone not paying attention, it drops the thing. Jimmy literally took my $2,000 helmet before I even put it on, dropped it on the ground. He's been known to drop expensive Tragic. stuff. Tragic. <laughs> Somebody's gonna drop the bike. It's gonna fall eventually. And that's definitely gonna be how this ends. I have a couple of small finishing touches I need to do on our engine before we can really get going. But luckily, we have a second Coleman mini bike right here, which these guys are gonna mock fit all of our aero components to check to make sure that it fits nicely. Then I can transfer all those pieces onto the main bike and we'll be ready to go. 100 miles an hour. <laughs> With me cranking on the engine and our boys working on the aero, things are going great. But I can't help but think about the thing they said earlier. Somebody's gonna drop the bike. It's gonna fall eventually. And that's definitely gonna be how this ends. Surely no one would find a way to damage our one-off custom aero pieces. Somebody's gonna drop the bike. Just when you think everything is going great. We dropped the bike on the underbelly, we snapped it. Now we gotta fix it. So we were lifted the bike up to get this under it. And as I was dropping it, I was like, hey Adam, am I clear? And he was like, yeah. And I dropped it and he was like, bro, why'd you break it? Whatever. I'm the one stuck here fixing it. So we can we can fix it on the inside. It's just wildly unfortunate. Nothing ever goes right. There is some concern with strength now that it's been broken. It's fantastic. Life's good. Okay, so we slowly drop the bike back on the tire. Make sure nothing hitting. We good? We're good. We're good? Okay, cool. Here we go, let's take a look. Covering my face to increase dramatic effect. Whoa! <laughs> oh, hell yeah, dude. Dude, this thing is sick. How's it feel? I mean, I can't see anything. Maybe I'll cut a little glass right here. Now our 3D printed aero kit is a little messy and this bike's called Lil Red. So we had to wrap it. Yeah, baby. Ow, I just stabbed myself. This bike is sharp now. Lots of sharp edges everywhere. With all of our upgrades complete, it's finally time for us to make our 100 mile per hour run, but we're gonna need a little bit more room. So we rented a private airstrip here in Santa Margarita. Today, there are a couple tests that we need to perform. One of the final upgrades we did was the gearing on Little Red. To go 100 miles an hour, this thing actually doesn't have gears like a transmission, so we have to gear it as high as possible. Now the problem with gearing Little Red as high as possible is that it's not good when you're starting out at zero. It'd be the equivalent if you had a manual car starting in sixth gear from zero. Not good, 
can't do it that way. So we have a little help from a mini ATV, AKA the push vehicle. We're gonna push me to get going. Also, hey Adam, have you ever driven a four wheeler? First time. <laughs> so yeah, so that's cool. <laughs> yeah, it's a little sketchy here. But you know what, luckily, can't turn too much. That's cool. All right, you wanna try to push me? You ready? Whatever you want. Okay, go for it. And I'll like, I'll tell you like faster or slower. The, the reason we're doing this, it helps not burn the clutch up. You know, cause I don't want to like do a bunch of runs. So he can just get me to about 15, maybe 20 even, and then we'll be good. The push method seems like it's gonna do the trick, but I want to be 100% positive. So we decided to try it again. And again. And sure enough, it's working great. Hell yeah, push feels great. Got a little bit of wobble in the front end, but you just gotta power through that. <laughs> so I'm excited, man, this is great. All right, so our initial tests worked out great. We're really not supposed to be here. We don't have a medic and this is dangerous. So we're gonna be here first thing in the morning. We're gonna take the bike back. We got a couple things we're gonna do. Just get everything ready for our 100 mile per hour run tomorrow. So in our journey to 100 miles an hour, we've met some doubters along the way. And now I'm ready to prove them all wrong. Here we are. Me, Little Red, and three quarters of a mile. Dude, we could do this. We could do this. Thank you guys so much for watching this and everything else at Donut. Follow us here at Donut at Donut Media. Follow me at Jeremiah Burton. Bye.